One of the biggest questions in the labor market right now is what happens to juniors? What happens to people early in their careers? Everybody's asking me this, but also we're seeing quantitative data that suggests that this is going to become a different AI story depending on where you are in your seniority when the AI curve hits your business. For folks who are senior in their careers, who have experience in their domain, plus some knowledge of AI, the ceiling is the limit and then you break through that. It is crazy, not just the compensation jumps that people are seeing, but also the number of additional jobs that are opening up for people who have those dual skill sets. For everybody else, there are differing stories that are less good. For seniors who have deep domain experience, but who do not have deep AI experience, many of them are choosing to walk away rather than learn AI. And that's not just me saying that as a general statement. I actually know multiple engineers, multiple PMs who do not want to deal with the AI transition at this stage in their career. And they're choosing what is effectively early retirement, right? Woodworking, opening a bookshop, going to open a small coffee shop, whatever it is, they don't want to do tech anymore. And that opens up job openings, but the job openings are going to people who have domain expertise plus AI, it's the new gold standard. What happens then to people who are juniors? What happens to people who are early in their careers, who are just getting started, who have graduated from college and who need to find a role? Well, first, they would be the first to tell you, and they tell me, it sucks out there, right? Like it's terrible and you can't get interviews. And if you do get interviews, it's AI conducting the interviews. And there's, it's an absolutely soulless process. And it's very, very difficult to find any role at all. So like the anecdotes are just piling up that it's a really rough market for juniors. On top of that, from a hiring perspective, it's really, really hard now to tell when you get a great junior employee who has good ramp and you can scale them into a senior rapidly versus when you don't. And that was always the bet, right? If I, I've been in the room hiring folks who are interns, hiring folks who are juniors for a long time now, the bet is always, is this person going to be someone with high ramp? Can they grow relatively quickly into a senior person? We had better signal on that three, four or five years ago than we do now. This is a case where AI has obfuscated signal. AI has hidden signal. It is camouflaged signal. It is harder now than it has ever been to properly assess talent. And I think that that difficulty is at the root of the job market issue. Now, you may say, well, it's AI, right? Like people are just not opening these roles because of AI. I would actually come back and say, AI is part of the problem, but it's part of the problem in a more interesting way than that. AI has contributed to an arms race condition where everyone is submitting resumes that are perfect. The recruiters are having to use AI to read them in many cases. They're having to use AI to do initial rounds of interview. And none of it is leading to the kind of gut level conviction that enables someone who has been in the field for a long time to say, this junior engineer has real potential. I want him or her or this PM is absolutely gonna run through walls for us, we need that person. Or this marketer is someone who's gonna do a fantastic job with this small channel and I can see growth for them in the future. That kind of conviction has never gone out of style. People know, even companies that are deep on AI, know that they need to be bringing people up who are that hungry, who are that dedicated, who are that deep on the domain, but they can't get the signal anymore. Now, there are a few cases where companies are choosing not to hire those employees as well because they think the seniors at the moment can do it for them and use AI agents. And that is a very deliberate strategy. It's a real strategy and it is a short-term strategy. At some point, those seniors are going to age out. Those seniors are going to go on to other things. Maybe they'll get promoted, they'll go to a different role. The average tech tenure is still quite short. Even though people are being told to stay in their roles, it's still two, two and a half years. What happens in two years when that role is vacant and now you need someone who knows the business and who knows how to manage AI agents and who knows your domain? A lot of companies are about to find that out. I know that we talk about the idea that there are a uh, Cambrian explosion of AI startups out there right now and they're not all gonna survive and some of them are gonna go to the wall in the next 12 to 18 months. There's a Cambrian explosion of role experimentation going on as well. Not all of those roles are going to survive when people start to figure out what actually works. And one of the things that has always been true that I'm continuing to bet on is that 
companies are going to need extremely energetic junior talent that they can start to ramp quickly into senior ranks. It's a continual need because people transition roles too often for it not to be a continual need. In other words, when people come back to me, and I have people come back to me and they say, Nate, this video is just bunk. And the video is bunk because by the time two years rolls around, AI will be so good, they won't need seniors anymore. I, I, and as some people are betting on that, right? Like, I'm not gonna say that opinion isn't out there. I will come back and I will say, people build products for people. People take care of people. There's a reason why Klarna rolled back their super aggressive AI only Klarna customer success. It wasn't because it was 2024 and 2025 and the models weren't perfect yet. It was because people didn't feel cared for by people. That is still going to be true in two years. And so, yeah, I do think we're still going to need people who know how to deliver value, partnering with AI agents with deep domain expertise, which means we need junior talent now in order to get there. And so if this, this is for you. If you are hiring, if you are considering a hiring strategy and you think to yourself, we can get away without a junior, I want to ask yourself if you can get away without a junior if the senior person in that role leaves. Can you? You should be honest. We need to think more about smart redundancy in our hiring. We should not be assuming that we can only get along with exactly who we have in the role. That's just not good long-term planning. If you are in the job market and you are looking for a role, this should be somewhat encouraging to you. I can't make a particular company decide to be intelligent and recognize that a sharp AI native, hungry junior is an excellent hire. But what I can do is say that if you are in the market and you are looking to distinguish yourself, you're looking to stand out from all of the applications and all of the noise, the best thing you can do is find any dimension to become one of one on. And that's really what people mean when they talk about building your profile online and putting projects up and this and that. They don't give you specific advice because everyone will follow that and it will become generic advice. The real value is in figuring out what is the thing you want to be known for and how do you put the word out that you want to be known for that? I put out a video earlier on power curves, on the idea that you want to find an exponential power curve and ride that from a career perspective. In the same way, you want to look at a focus area that you can stand out in from an application perspective and obsess over your online profile about that. And so I know someone who obsessed over this intersection between sales enablement and being an entrepreneur and sort of being able to do both and being able to show that they were very autonomous and entrepreneurial, but also had deep experience with sales enablement. And that particular Venn diagram, that was them, right? And they wanted to do one of one and they put up spear phishing videos with just that spear phishing sounds really spammy, but like they, they did custom videos with just that. And they did very well out of their job search because they had the focus. They had the focus. I know other folks who have figured out that their focus is on, you know, AI automations in a particular subdomain. And they're going to tell you all about how they trade off N8N and Zapier and Make and a half a dozen other platforms to actually deliver value. Whatever your specialty is, get one, get one, pick one, and then double down on it and make sure that you are the one. You are one of one for that. You are as far along the power curve as you can get so that people know that if they are looking for someone who does this particular niche, your name is going to pop up. And the reason I say that is because if you just try and compete on the variables everyone is maxing, like how many LinkedIn friends you can get and how many webinars you can attend and how perfect your application is and how amazing your cover letter is and how phenomenal your ability to cold email is. Everyone else is maxing those two. And so you have to find ways in a game that has reached a equilibrium that is not in your favor to break the game. You have to find ways to start to push through and say, I am really, really good at this. I'm going to make sure that you know me and hear my name if you see it. And if you're going to come back and say, wow, that's really unfair. It shouldn't have to be that way. I'll say, yeah, it is. It's not fair. Life isn't fair, but it is actionable. It is something you can do. And it's something that will help you stand out. It's actionable advice that has traction, has teeth to it. I get that it sucks. Being junior is really tough right now. The world still needs you. The tech world still needs you. Not all of them have realized it yet. And so part of your job, if you are working in a company and you're seeing this video, is to share it 
with someone on your hiring team so that I can talk to them and say, guys, I know that you're thinking about the next six months and the next 12 months and the fiscal year budget and what you can deliver on. I get it. But you have to think about short tenures for senior people and the possibility that you are going to need real influx of very sharp junior talent. And you got to plan for it. You got to take it seriously. And you've got to find a way to make that an edge in your culture. I know some people are making that an edge in their culture from a hiring perspective by saying, we need an injection of AI native blood. And so we are going to open the gate specifically to junior talent on any role as long as they are AI native. And so they actually down level some of the seniority requirements for some of their traditional roles and say, there's an exception. You have to have so many years of experience unless you're AI native and can prove it, right? Unless you can, and they'll have different rules, like something with AI automation, something with tooling and tool use, et cetera. But people are doing that because they need a way to show what the culture edge is by bringing in someone who's younger. And so I, I hope you see this if you're hiring and you take it seriously. I don't want you to be in a position in two or three years where you regret the hiring choices you made today and just hiring seniors. If you're junior, I hope this gives you some hope. You can play the power law game. You can stand out. You can get noticed and you can get hired. It is possible. It's happening. And yes, the game is harder than it used to be. Good luck.